Hi students, and welcome to today's Live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the very, very west coast of Canada, in fact, on Vancouver Island. I hope everybody is having a good weekend so far, staying healthy, staying strong, optimistic, and productive. In this class, everyone, we are looking at IELTS speaking part two, the long answer, and we're going to work through an example together uh, for a band nine score. Again, uh, this lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. And for the general IELTS, please visit us at gieltshelp.com. That's general IELTS help. Dot com. Uh, this is a members chat class. Of course, everybody is welcome to watch. In 90 minutes, we will have an all chat class where everybody will be able to join in on the chat. And it's a good idea to hang around in this class because part three speaking coming up in 90 minutes is somewhat of a continuation of the part two topic as well. Welcome Carolina, our chat moderator. Hi Rashika, hi Rajveer, good to see you in today's class. Ois, nice to see you as well. All right everyone, just a quick glimpse at our websites. This is aehelp.com here with the blue background. You can click that big red button there to join the premium package. It is a one-time payment for lifetime access to over 100 hours of video lessons, six original practice exams, and a fully and interactive course. Uh, for the general IELTS, it's the same idea, green background, of course, the uh, writing and reading sec sections are unique to the general IELTS. Uh, again, click that big red button there to join the premium package. It's well worth it, not a lot of money a one-time payment, and you get to use it as long as you need to. Okay, everyone, if you have any questions, send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, welcome, Pedro. Welcome, Natalie. And uh, once again, we have that speaking part three for everyone coming up in 90 minutes as well. And then we have our next uh, week of schedules from Wednesday to Saturday. So these live classes run Wednesday to Saturday and the new schedule will be up on our uh, YouTube community posts. Now let's get into some speaking. So uh, this is a speaking class members. So make sure to both speak and write. So when you write your ideas, that's great. Make sure to say them nice and loud, okay? Copy my intonation, my pronunciation. Good communication is a very integral part of a happy and successful life, so you want to always practice that. Okay, uh, here we go uh, with part two. So, as many of our regular members know, the very, very first step to part two success is to read the question extremely carefully. Still one of the most common mistakes in the speaking interview, especially for uh, candidates with good English, is to speak off topic. You must not speak off topic. So it's very important to read the question carefully. And the topic statement, read it twice, just to be sure, okay? Uh, so here we go, part two. Talk about someone you personally know who has won a big award. Okay, so let's read that one more time. Uh, talk about someone you personally know uh, who has won a big award. Okay, and this will be the third time you read it or the third time you hear it because the uh, examiner has already done this for you as well. So when you get to part two, the way it works is the examiner will say, okay, um, last question from part one. They'll say, that's the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, I will show you some questions. You will have one minute to read the questions, 
think about your answers, and then you will have two minutes to give a response. There's some note paper in front of you there. You have a pen. You can take notes in the one minute preparation time if you wish. Talk about someone you personally know who has won a big award. So when they show you the questions, technically they're in their training, it says that they should read uh, this sentence for you. Uh, that's emphasizing for you to really just stay on topic. Okay. So when the examiner reads the topic statement for part two, uh, that should be a cue. It's a cue card. That should be uh, an indication that, hey, you need to really focus to be on topic here. Okay. So first, uh, who is this person and what is his or her relationship to you? Uh, what award did they receive and when? How did they uh, achieve this award? Uh, why do you think they deserve this award? So lots of questions here. And then uh, you will have one to two minutes to talk about this topic. Okay, good. So everybody's in there. All right. We've got a good number of members in the class. We've read the question carefully. Uh, what is my next step? So what do I do after I've done all of this? Okay. Um, so uh, Rajveer says, identify the category and the tense. And Carolina says that indeed is a person. Absolutely. So uh, step two, and this is happening extremely fast. Uh, identify the category. In this case, it's a person and the tense. And in this case, what is the tense? So if we look at this, these questions carefully, uh, what tense are we mostly in? So what, what's, is it the present? Are we talking about the future, the past? Um, what are we really using here? Natalie says mostly the past. Yeah, because it's a person that we know who has won a big award. So we know them, which is present tense. They won the award, which is past tense. So it's kind of a past tense moving to present tense. Uh, likely to use a lot of present perfect. Why would present perfect be really useful here, students? And this is um, a good uh, kind of quiz to see who remembers the reason for um, using present perfect. Okay, so here we have present for the pre tenses, present, past, and specifically uh, present perfect is a very useful tense. Uh, for this discussion. Why? Very nice, Rajveer. Yeah, emphasizing achievement, right? Um, one of, uh, and Nick Hill got that too, one of the five main reasons to um, use present perfect is to emphasize achievement because when we achieve um, a goal or an award. It starts in the past. It continues into the present and in the future. So if you have won an Olympic gold medal, it's something that you did, you achieved back when the Olympics were going on. And then, uh, that achievement continues till now. And you will always have that achievement in the future as well. Right? So, um, yeah, very good. So you would definitely naturally hear a lot of present perfect when a native English speaker is discussing uh, someone they know who has won an award. Okay. All right. So we've done that. Uh, identified the category. What's step number three? So what's my next step? Okay. So I've read the question. I've quickly identified uh, that it's a person. Of course, a person is best described by appearance 
achievement, or sorry, I should say personality, um, backed by action, right? So that's what we need to remember. Okay, so we'll get more into that. Don't worry if you didn't catch that. I'll discuss that more as we go through this. Natalie says some ideas. Carolina Nick Hill also saying two to three ideas um, that could be good. Yeah, so here you're uh, thinking about everybody that you know, your relatives, brothers, cousins, parents, friends, uh, teachers, and so forth, uh, who have potentially received some kind of noteworthy uh, award for uh, some activity that they did. Um, so... Yeah, think of two to three ideas uh, that work. And if you don't know anyone, okay, uh, that has won some kind of award, uh, you have to come up with it. You have to uh, create one from imagination, okay? So you have to pretend that you know someone who has won a big award. Uh, you could either take somebody from real life that you don't actually personally know and pretend that you know them personally, or you could take someone you personally know and pretend that they won a big award, okay? Um, do, you, do you get that? So did everybody catch that? Okay. Um, so Carolina says, my best friend Diego won a scholarship to study civil engineering at the University of Toronto. That is a very clever idea, Carolina. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but it's such a good idea that it definitely sounds true. Is that true, Carolina? Do you have a best friend Diego who got a scholarship or did you just come up with that? Because that is clever. Okay, so if you don't know anyone, then use your imagination, which means either pretend that you know a famous uh, person who has won some award, or pretend that someone you know has won a famous or a um, big award, okay, like a Nobel Prize or something like that. So you have to be creative. In this part two cue card, you simply cannot say, well, unfortunately, I don't know anybody personally who has won a big award, end of conversation, Ooh, okay. Uh, it's gonna be hard to get a high band score with that, all right, so be careful. Okay, so some ideas here. Um, Carolina says, best friend Diego won a full scholarship to University of Toronto, U of T. Okay, um, good. Rajveer has a brother who likes to dance their heart out. Very good. So brother won first prize in dance competition. Okay. Yeah, very good. So right away, we're starting to realize that there are kind of two types of awards that a person can generally win, okay? Um, a, it can be some kind of athletic award. All right, uh, like for dance or for gymnastics or swimming or weightlifting, okay? Um, or it can be an intellectual award. So something for thinking, like um, like a scholarship for having outstanding grades or writing an incredible essay, okay? It could also be a social award for doing something in society, right? So there are different kind of categories of awards, uh, helping the homeless and so on, recognition for that. That might be a little bit trickier to talk about, so be careful, okay? All right, 
Uh, Nick Hill says, my brother got an employee of, uh, an award for best employee of the year. That's fantastic. That's a really clever idea, Nick Hill. Um, because again, it's easy to talk about, uh, lots of content and it's original. Okay. So I really like that one, Nick Hill. So, uh, brother got an award for best employee of the year. Um, where major law firm, something like that. Okay. Okay. Natalie says my university teacher, Vladimir won government grants for, uh, his projects in genetics. Yeah. You can win, uh, grants as well. Um, so that's a good one as well. Okay. So teacher, uh, Vladimir won grants, won government grants uh, for uh, genetics research projects. Yeah. Um, so members, I have to say here, I have to commend you on your thinking because uh, many of you like uh, Natalie, Rajveer, Carolina, Rashika, and OS who have been with me for a long time. If you remember back to when you started learning with me, uh, you at times had some difficulty coming up with good ideas for these part two questions. And I just want you to stop for a moment and realize how much your thinking has improved in coming up with effective ideas quickly to these kinds of questions. And I'm really pleasantly impressed and surprised by your ability to come up with these effective answers. They're looking great. And so far, any one of these could make for a fantastic part two uh, response. So um, hats off to you. Very good. Okay. Very nice. Okay. And Rashika says, my father won a presidential award uh, for a book in 2015. Again, a very nice uh, idea. Rashika, so it works very well. Okay. All right. Um, so, um, no, it's, it's, yeah, thank you. But it's also thanks to you, your dedication and your hard work. Okay. Um, June says, my cousin James won $10,000 in the National Talent Show uh, powerful memories. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, we're going to choose one because these ideas are just coming now one after the other. And like I say, pretty much any one of these could be a good idea. So I'll let you vote this time and uh, decide on what you want. So, uh, one, two, three, four, five, we've got five very good ideas here. I'll take the one that I think seems to get the most votes. So, uh, best friend Diego won a full scholarship to University of Toronto, nice and specific. Uh, brother won first prize in a dance competition. It's a good idea. It could be a bit more specific. Brother got an award for best employee of the year. Again, another good idea. Teacher Vladimir won government grants for genetics research project. Very good. Could be a little bit tricky to talk about genetics. Um, my father won a presidential award for a book in 2015. Nice and specific. Again, uh, very good. So let's take a vote. Just throw it out there. Don't overthink it. Um, our next step, of course, will be to create some usable, uh, useful notes. Uh, so let's get to that nice and quick. So just cast your vote. Notice this verb, cast your vote. Okay. You cast a vote, uh, just like you cast a fishing rod. So when you go fishing, you cast your fishing rod. And when you uh, give your vote, we also say you cast your vote, C-A-S-T, cast, okay? All right, Rajveer says number three. Pedro says, number one, with a monkey uh, holding a laser gun and a red baseball cap, I think. That's what that emoji is. Very nice, Pedro. Uh, Nick Hill says, number three. Natalie says, number five. Carolina says, number one. Ois says, number five. Wow, we've got a pretty good split decision here. Uh, so two for three. Two for one. Okay. And uh, two for five. Okay. 
All right, yeah, those are all. I would I would agree that those are all good ones. Um, so it's it's a little bit of a tough one. All right, so I'll make a veto decision here. Uh, let's go with um, yeah, let's go with number one. I like it. My best friend Diego won a full scholarship to U of T. I think there's a lot of information there. It's absolutely original. Okay, I definitely think it's a very original thought. Um, and I think it's fairly easy to talk about for two minutes. So let's go with number one in this case, okay? All right. So number one it is. Uh, let's uh, take some notes on it, okay? So that's our next step is useful notes. Now again, remember, appearance, personality, backed by action, okay? So when you're doing your notes, keep that in mind, all right? Uh, yeah, okay, let's do it like this. So appearance, and then Plus action, okay? And of course, keep in mind the questions. Okay, so first of all, uh, just a couple of quick sentences on uh, what Pedro looks like, okay? So your best friend Pedro, what does Pedro look like? Uh, come up with a couple of ideas. Try to write down always notes that you wouldn't naturally think of, okay? So something that will help you to create original content, good lexical resource, okay? So once again, the first point, just a couple points, it's only 10, 20 seconds of your part two, um, is describe what Pedro looks like so we can see Pedro in our mind because of course we don't know uh, Pedro. Uh, Rajveer says, isn't it for an award, an event as well? Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Yeah, I would say that there's a bit of an event feeling there. So Rajveer, keeping in mind what you need to include for an event is also a good idea. Yeah, it's smart thinking, Rajveer. Okay, so Rashika says, Pedro is two meters tall, slender, 30 years old. Okay, so... Yeah, let's make him a little bit younger, Rashika. Let's make him 25. Okay. All right, Nick Hill says curly hair wears spectacles. All right, Curly and I hope that, you know, this kind of is an imaginary friend. Otherwise, maybe we've completely made um, Diego look something very different. Okay, so... Spectacles is an interesting word because in Canada and the U.S. we usually say glasses, but British use spectacles. But again, that's good vocabulary, okay? So spectacles, blue eyes, sure. Uh, Well-dressed. All right, that's good. Um, so what is Pedro or sorry, Pedro, I keep saying Pedro, Diego. Um, what is Diego like? Okay, so give me a personality that's fitting for this answer and give me the action. So this is where you always want to think of personality, action, personality, action. So give me uh, a personality trait of uh, Diego's that's, that fits with this idea of winning a big award and then at the same time uh, give me the action that backs up this personality and try to make it concise so don't write really big long sentences just a few words okay so Okay, so Natalie says polite. So Natalie, when you say polite in your notes, you'd want to say something like polite opens doors well spoken, okay? So it's something that shows that Diego is polite. So he, door, he opens the doors for people, lets people go ahead of him. 
Okay, now Natalie, make sure you're focusing on the topic. So uh, Diego has won a big award. It's a scholarship uh, to go to the University of Toronto. So being polite is okay, but it's not a personality trait that's directly related to winning a scholarship. Okay, so Carolina says studious. That's much better in sense of uh, being directly related. Okay, so Carolina says, studious four hours each day on research and prep. Okay, yeah, that is directly related. So that would be a high caliber note. Okay, so he's studious, and studious, of course, is nice lexical resource. So very good. Okay. Uh, Natalie loves reading. Yeah, so that would be part of studious. So reads a book each week. Okay, something more specific, right? Um, Rashika, so when you say smart, what would be, that's, that's good, but what would be the action that backs up smart? Okay. 4.9 out of 5 GPA. Uh, just a quick question here. Um, what does GPA stand for? So GPA, it's good to know that acronym. Uh, anybody knows what GPA stands for? Okay. June says industrious. Uh, burns the midnight oil. Okay, it's fine. Now, industrious uh, June is a little bit of just a synonym of studious. So careful not to repeat yourself too much, even if you're using synonyms. So ideally, you're either using the word studious or industrious. Using both is really overlapping. You always want to give new information in part two. Um, yeah, Rajvir, grade point average, very good, yeah. Okay, that's how your grades are measured in university, all right? Okay, good. So um, we've got some... Uh, um, personality traits backed up by some actions, which is fantastic. All right. Now, as Rajveer cleverly pointed out, this is also kind of an event. And um, as I pointed out, you want to keep in mind the questions, right? So here, uh, the questions ask... Uh, who is this person and what is his, her relationship to you? Okay. Uh, so here we know that, um, Diego is your best friend. You shouldn't write that down, but you should write down something like, met in middle school math. Okay. Just to remind you of that question's answer. Okay. And very quickly, you're going through the questions just like that, okay? Um, what award did they receive and when? Okay. Now, um, it's a full scholarship. Scholarships usually have a name. And... Uh, Diego, we're assuming Carolina is Spanish. Um, so what scholarship did um, Diego receive? Uh, give me some ideas, okay? So what would be a good name for a scholarship if you're coming up with it, okay? So 2020, June uh, 5th, scholarship for the University of uh, Toronto. Okay, Carolina, very good. So Fulbright scholarship, sure. And you'd probably want to say what that is. 
Okay. Okay, awarded to the best student in that year, maybe. All right. Okay, good. Um, let's uh, go to the next question. Um, so how did they achieve this award? Uh, we have some information about that already. That's why I said the GPA is uh, 4.9. Um, why do you think they deserve this award? Okay. All right, let's just say best in class. And now at this point, you're kind of running out of your one minute preparation time. So you have to get into uh, speaking mode and you might have about 10 seconds remaining in your one minute preparation time, okay? And in that 10 seconds, you have to take a very important step. Step five, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, because step four, these are your notes. Okay, and step five, as I'm sure many of you are quickly realizing, is to have your first sentence ready. This is an extremely important step to get a band nine, to get a high band score in the speaking section. So step five is uh, have your first sentence ready. Uh, so when the examiner asks you to speak, you can begin right away. It's very important for fluency, coherence, and uh, you can say a specific answer to the question, okay? Uh, so please don't say something like, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Or don't say something like, I know a few different people who have won some major awards, but the person that I would like to talk about today is my best friend, Diego. Don't say that either. Okay, those will get you low marks uh, because they're memorized. The examiner knows this. It's wasting your valuable talking time. Uh, so those kinds of memorized template answers will not get you good scores in the speaking section. You have to be original, okay? So uh, give me a nice original sentence. And I can see there's some good ideas uh, for um, this response. So always June, those are some good ideas, covering tuition fees, living expenses, and so forth. We can get into that later. For now, let's get that first sentence out, okay? So don't get so lost in your notes that you're not able to deliver your first sentence. Let's deliver that first sentence, okay? All right. So give me that first sentence uh, that accurately answers this question. When you're thinking about that first sentence, of course, you should always be thinking about this topic statement. So talk about someone you personally know uh, who has won a big award. Okay, Oa says, a person I know who got a big award is my best friend Diego, who got a scholarship to the University of Toronto in on June 5th of 2020. Okay, Oa is good. I like how you're quick... Uh, with your response, it's got a couple of grammatical mistakes, but that's okay. Uh, you're being fast, which is just as important for coherence to be fluent and quick. And you're being specific, which is good. Okay. I'll create my first sentence while everybody else is doing the same. And then we'll read through a few of them and compare. But I have a feeling we'll have similar kinds of uh, first sentences. So...
okay? So this is what I have, my best friend Diego, who I have known for the past 15 years, uh, won a major scholarship just a year ago, back in June of 2020, okay? All right, and I see lots of first sentences coming up here. Good, Rajveer says, a person whom I personally know and has won a big award is my close friend Diego, uh, who won a scholarship for Master's in Science from the University of Toronto. Nice and specific. Uh, Nick Hill says, my, be uh, my best friend Diego, who has achieved, who has won, okay, a Fulbright scholarship to the University of Toronto back in 2020 of June 5th. Nick, he'll not bad, careful with your grammar and uh, careful with awkward phrasing. Best friend of mine, it's a bit awkward, okay? Um, you don't achieve a scholarship, you actually win a scholarship because usually multiple students are competing for it. Hans says, a person that I know and has won a big award is one of my seniors uh, in Asia Pacific Informatics Olympiad last year. Hans, you have a lot of information in there and it's a bit confusing. Try to stick to the same topic as everybody else. So best friend Diego, scholarship to University of Toronto. Um, Olympiad, okay, so he's now in the Olympics. Um, Asia Pacific Informatics. Informatics Olympiad. I'm not sure what that is. So you'd have to really explain that clearly. Okay. I have kind of an idea, but I'm not clear on that. Um, Carolina says a really studious person that I know is my best friend, Diego, who won a scholarship to study civil engineering at the University of Toronto in 2020. Uh, Carolina, you have a lot of information in there um, that's not supported. So studious person, okay, that's good, but you really have to be clever to explain that afterwards very clearly. Otherwise, it's just a hanging personality trait. Okay, that's kind of like, okay, where are you going with this? Uh, Rashika says, my best friend Diego is a person uh, I have known for quite some time, and he has won a scholarship back in 2020. Yeah, so Rashika, yours is very similar to mine as well. Um, yeah, so rather than saying uh, who I personally know, I just say who I have known for the past 15 years. And of course, here I'm using present perfect because I'm emphasizing my experience of knowing Diego throughout those years and this makes it clear it's somebody i personally know okay so simple clear to the point your first sentence everyone should be a sentence that has no mistakes okay it's just like task two hook in your writing you don't want to have mistakes in your first sentence because it just sounds really really bad okay to start with a a sentence that's not grammatically accurate or does not sound natural Okay, uh, so at this point, the examiner says, all right, so uh, your one-minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. And right away, you begin with, my best friend Diego, who I have known for the past 15 years, won a major scholarship just a year ago, back in June of 2020. Uh, students, make sure you're repeating me as well. Okay, so repeat. There we go. All right. Okay, so what comes next? Uh, Diego's appearance. Um, so, um, Diego is a tall and slender man, almost two meters in height. Okay, so uh, same thing that you're doing right now is don't overcomplicate, stick to your notes, okay? It's okay to look at your notes. It's okay to look at the task two cue card. In fact, it's a good idea to do that because uh, that will allow you to speak clearly in a structured way. Uh, do make eye contact with the examiner when you're looking up at them, but you don't have to have um, a staring competition 
with the examiner uh, and uh, do use your notes. That's why they are there. Too many students forget to use their notes in speaking part two and their mark isn't as high as it could be. Okay. So slender, 25 years old, spectacles, blue eyes. Okay. All right. So Diego is a tall and slender man, almost two meters in height. He has uh, blue eyes and wears um, spectacles. Yeah, and you can even throw in something naturalist because probably because he reads so much as I sight is strained a bit all right um so just like that okay so just a quick uh few second description so please do not spend any significant time describing their appearance just something quick so that the examiner can visually put diego in front of them okay it's a much clearer, more powerful form of communication when we can see the person, the object, the place that the other is talking about, especially when we have no idea what that is. Okay, so one more time, my best friend Diego, who I have known for the past 15 years, won a major scholarship just a year ago, back in June of 2020. Diego is a tall and slender man, almost two meters in height. He has blue eyes and wears spectacles, probably because he reads so much, his eyes are strained a bit. Okay. All right, Oa says, I have known. Use your present perfect, Oa, especially when you're talking about how, how long you have known someone. So I have known Diego since the age of seven. He is a clever student at school and he always gets a high score. He is a tall guy, about two meters with blue eyes. And he is 25 years old when he received the scholarship last year. Okay. Regevere says he is two meters tall with an average build and has blue eyes, curly black hair. He wears spectacles and he studies a lot. Very nice, Regevere. Rashika says Diego is tall, around two meters height, slender. He has blue eyes and dark hair and he's 25 years old. Very good, Rashika. And that's it. Okay. Just a quick description of what Diego looks like. Very nice. Okay, great job. Always come back to the question, right? So, All right. So going back right to the topic of the question. So last year, I was pleasantly surprised when I had heard from him that he won the Fulbright scholarship to the University of Toronto, uh, which will pay not only his tuition fees to complete his master's in civil engineering, but also it will cover his living expenses as well. Okay. <clears throat> Akshay says, I have known Diego for seven years. He is tall and he has blue eyes and black hair. He is always wearing a big smile on his face. Okay, Akshay, good. Notice my grammar corrections. They're important. Uh, June says, I have known about Diego for over a decade. He is a bit chubby uh, with his paunch sticking out. However, he has a good taste in clothes, always dressing sharp 
with a decent sports jacket. Okay, good, June. Yeah, so don't overdo it, June. Remember, just keep it concise, okay? Only about 10, 15 seconds on this. All right, so I'm moving along. Again, I've come back to the question. I'm looking at the card, okay? So now I'm looking at his personality traits. Studious, smart, industrious, polite, okay? Um, so the reason he won this award, right? Okay, so going into those details and connecting to the questions, all right? So the reason that he received this scholarship is because he got the highest GPA in his graduating class. He graduated with a GPA of 4.9 from 5. Indeed, Diego is an extremely studious and industrious student. He often burns the midnight oil studying 11 until 11 p.m. or later, and he reads at least one book each week, okay? So at this point, again, I'm looking at the questions, looking at the notes, making sure that I cover all the questions on the card, okay? So how did they achieve this award? I could probably say a little bit more about this. And why do I think they deserve this award? So these two points I can definitely talk a little bit more about. Do the same thing. So use those notes. Write some sentences, all right? Rajvir says, I was overjoyed as well as surprised when he called me last year uh, that he has been bestowed with the Fulbright Scholarship Award awarded to Bright Minds uh, in college. Okay, Rajvir, good, yeah. All right, so you're going down the same path as me. A little bit different words, your own diction. Very nice, okay? So,
All right. So moving along, using those notes, okay? Uh, here we go. So I think that Diego truly deserves this award, first and foremost, because he is the cleverest student in his undergraduate class, and also because he is a really down-to-earth and polite person who will represent his community well at the University of Toronto. Diego is considerate of others, opens doors for people, uh, greets people with a cheery smile, and stays optimistic about his ambitions. I'm sure that Diego will complete an excellent master's thesis and will be a great addition to the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Toronto. Okay. All right. So at this point, uh, you're likely running out of time. If you still have some time, then you can expand further on these ideas, staying on topic. Be very, very careful, uh, students. If you have more time, make sure that you're staying on topic. So stick to talking about the award. Stick to talking about Diego, Diego's personality of why he deserves this award. Okay, so do not go off topic, all right? Akshay says, he is not only clever, but also an industrious person. He always gives 100% to his work. He got 4.5 out of 5 on his GPA for this achievement. Uh, he had burnt the midnight oil and improved on his weaknesses. Okay, Akshay, not bad. Remember to always back personality by action. 4.5 out of 5 is very good. But in order to win a scholarship, probably have to be even better than that, Akshay. But eh, it doesn't really matter. It's not like the examiner will judge you on that. But yeah, it's good, okay? Rashika says he is a very studious person. He has spent five to six hours a day on research work, uh, reading papers in order to meet the requirements of this prestigious award. Keep coming back to that. All right, students, so here we go. Repeat after me. Let's go from the top. Make sure that we're being sensible and accurately answering the question. My best friend, Diego, who I have known for the past 15 years, won a major scholarship just a year ago, back in June of 2020. Diego is a tall and slender man, almost two meters in height. He has blue eyes, wears spectacles, probably because he reads so much. His eyes are a bit strained. Last year, I was pleasantly surprised when I had heard from him that he won the Fulbright Scholarship to the University of Toronto, which will pay for not only his tuition fees to complete his master's in civil engineering, but also it will cover his living expenses as well. The reason that he received this scholarship is because he got the highest GPA in his graduating class. He graduated with a GPA of 4.9 from 5. Indeed, Diego is an extremely studious and industrious student. He often burns the midnight oil, studying around 11 p.m. until around 11 p.m. or later. And he reads at least a book each week. I think Diego truly deserves this award, first and foremost, because he is the cleverest student in his undergraduate class and also because he is a really down-to-earth and polite person who will represent his community well at the U of T. Diego is considerate of others, opens doors for people, greets people with a cheery smile, and stays optimistic about his ambitions. I'm sure that Diego will complete an excellent master's thesis and will be a great addition to the Faculty of Engineering at the University of Toronto. He really does deserve this Fulbright scholarship. Okay, your two-minute speaking time is up. I will now ask you a question related to your response and some questions on the topic of part two for part three. Uh, let's talk about receiving awards, okay? And part three will be coming up soon um, in uh, about 35 minutes. You've done a great job, uh, students. And again, make sure to go back, review this, see what I did here. Try it on your own. So try it with a different... Uh, award or achievement, record it on your phone, listen back, try to compare it with this one, see what are the similarities, what are the differences, okay? And uh, stick around for part three, which is 
coming up in half an hour. Okay, so that's it for the long part. That's all the time we have for this. And now we'll get into those specific questions. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria for now. Definitely visit and check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS and gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Thank you, Carolina, for moderating. Thank you, members, for your support. See you soon. Bye.